Good afternoon, viewers, or wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good evening. Welcome to another edition of Cancer with Dr. Denise Ejo, CEO of Komod Cancer Foundation, in partnership with Plus TV Africa. I want to thank you all for joining us again for another of our survivors' experiences and tales that are going to help the cancer space understand the journeys and stop thinking that you're just going to die because you've got cancer. I thank you all for joining us again this afternoon, and I hope you're really having a good time. And to those of us in Nigeria, I hope that you're all keeping safe and doing what you've got to do as your civic duty. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another discussion and today in the house, I've got a survivor whom I'm going to hail again. His name is Ochai Iba. Hello, Ochai. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Good afternoon from Nigeria here. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> now, now I'm happy you're smiling. You're relaxed now. That's what I need. I need you to relax. Today, Ochai is going to be telling us his story. So our title of our program today is a survivor story of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma with Ochai. Ochai is a non-Hodgkin's cancer survivor who is a chef, a chef by profession. He is an advocate for cancer and hopes to impact change through his shared experience. As you will appreciate, Ochai enjoys cooking and continues to develop his own culinary skills because of his needs and challenges. He has chosen cancer advocacy because he is a survivor and wants to encourage cancer patients that they can survive cancer too. Thank you, Achai, for joining us this afternoon, of morning or evening, wherever you are. Are you relaxed? Are you ready for me now, Achai? I'm relaxed. Thank you too. All right, let's go. Let's, let's go with our first question. So what is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma from your knowledge as a survivor? So I'm not asking you medical questions. Yeah, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is a cancer disease which was uh, diagnosed in the 2016 in India. Hmm. Okay, yeah. so that's where you, you found that you had Yes, so talk in us India. through your journey. Talk us through your, your cancer journey. Talk us through how you found okay. out, what you found the old, out. The whole thing started, yeah, it all started in that same 2016. But even when it started, I didn't know it was a, it was a cancer that I had. And uh, I was going from hospital to hospital in Nigeria here, but then it was not detected at all. And I was going very lean, you know, big tummy, swollen legs, bit weight loss, no appetite of eating. So, like I said, I worked with a transcomputer before. Now, because of COVID-19, we are laid off of our job. But at that time, they were the ones that sponsored my trip to India. So it was when I got to in before India and in Ethiopia, but in the air. I was paralyzed one side. So when I got to India, and, and uh, the test were, was carried on, that was where I got to know it was a non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And I was at the last stage, last stage. So I was talking to the lab, ran all the tests, giving the word, and I started taking chemo, chemotherapy immediately. Like I said, I took six circles of chemotherapy. I got better there, not completely why, but I, I was 90% better. So after three months in India, I was I was discharged and asked to come and complete my remaining chemo in Nigeria. So I came with the chemo from India to Nigeria and I was ministered the chemo in Nigeria. So this is where I finished the remaining six cycle, making it 12 cycle hour. Then, after that, I started going for a PET scan. There was no PET scan in Nigeria then. So I was using South Africa for a PET scan. Every year I go for PET scan. Every year I go for PET scan. Until just recent uh, uh, 2019 or 2018, 2019 when I was uh, free. No more cancer again in my system and in my body. Wow. Okay, so for our viewers now, I'm going to explain to you what non, non 
non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is a type of cancer that begins in your lymphatic system, which is part of the body's germ-fighting immune system. And it affects the white blood cells. Well, now we're not medical medical people. We actually talk about this to help cancer patients and survivors understand there are other people out there fighting this disease. Um, the word called cancer. It is. It's called cancer. We're all no no big deal. Uh, thank you, Chai, for sharing that because you you highlight some interesting things that um, from your story, which um, I want to pick up on. You've talked about very briefly, you talked about being partially paralyzed when you on en route. Did you ever find out why you got partially paralyzed? Are you are you still partially paralyzed or you're back full? No, I'm back full and healthy, very strong now. Praise God. I'm very happy to hear that because you know when I this program is, is as a result of my own journey with cancer. I've not yet got to your stage, but by the grace of God, I will get, get there. I'm still on my six and a half year journey, but that's fine. We're still here and we're still fighting. And thank you for being an advocate. So thank you for sharing your journey. How have you, you. How has it been for you? Well, I, I must say I thank God. I thank God, but it has not been easy. It has not been easy because uh, cancer requires assistance especially from the government of the country why i said this is because cancer is very is very expensive to to treat uh, you can imagine if i was not with a transport meeting at that time where money was spent for me that took care of all my bills now that i'm not working what would have happened so it's it's, it's very expensive it's not been easy, and even at that, I still try to maintain my diet, which is very expensive here. Yeah. yeah, dieting, I do a lot of dieting, and I do sport a lot. I, I do some exercise too, you know. So it's not an easy journey, I can tell you. In the area of finance, it's, it's tight. It's very tight. The truth. I want to say thank you. Okay, so let's, let's take a break now, because I'm coming back to ask you from... So earlier, I hope there are personal questions. And to all of you out there, um, we're talking to real survivors. We're talking to people who have gone through this journey. And today, Ochai is being honest and telling us how he has gone through it and navigated it irrespective of where he was. He was in Nigeria and he had to move to India. Now, I'm coming back from this point on what we are experiencing and the advocacy and the importance of advocacy in making a difference in Nigeria and in low middle income countries across the world because we need to, cancer survivors, our voices need to be heard and not heard by everybody else but us. Thank you all and I'll see you in a few minutes. Uh, welcome, I'll be welcoming you back again in a few minutes. Welcome back, everyone, and I'm having a fantastic time We're actually discussing with Ochai. You see, one of the interesting things about this cancer journey is every single one of us have a common thread, but we still have a branch off of the um, of the way this disease is. So welcome back to this um, after the short break, and we're going to be continuing this conversation with Ochai. Thank you, Ochai, for sharing your story. So let's go now. Thank you. Um, you raised something that bothers me, and I'll say why. Because, you see, Nigeria is our home. And wherever we are in the world, sometimes conditions put us there. And one of the biggest fights for cancer patients across the world is lack of finance. Another thing a lot of people do not recognize is there are issues with our diet which is also related to finance. There's also our mental health, which is also related to finance. There is our mobility, which is also related to finance. And somehow everybody thinks that our journey is just about chemo. And it's important for us to be able to explain to people that our journey is not about chemo 
or all the just medical parts. There are lots more that go on in our lives. So from your own experience or from your, or you give me your view because this is about you and I knowing what we're talking about. How did you raise this fund? So you've said that your, your employers paid for you to get to India. So you've already kicked, ticked a box that if you didn't have that employer, you won't be where you are. I mean, Sure, sure. Now, this same comment you are making is the same comment I'm making about myself, which I keep telling people. If I didn't have the right to come, I didn't have dual nationality and was not living in and out of England and Nigeria, I would also have been dead. Mm. It's something I, I'm trying to make other people understand. It is just the grace of God that we are in the right place at the right time. Sure, it's sure. Not, we do not have the opportunity of a story. And a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So how do you feel about this? As a, Talk it, say it as it is. How are you feeling? How do you say, how do you feel? I sometimes get annoyed. I'm not going to lie. I'm annoyed because it is because I was born and brought up in India. Why can't I get treatment? Why did I have to travel? Why did you have to travel? Why can't we not be treated? I am. I tell you the truth. I, am, I. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy, but there is little I can. I can do. Uh, in fact, there was a time I was supposed to go for a PET scan. I was due for a PET scan, and I. I was out of job already, and I had to go to Ministry of Health in the federal secretariat, here, and I. I met a doctor, and I showed him all my my papers, my documents, my pictures, even on admission and even when I got back, I showed him, I showed him my passport. So I, I really wanted him to believe that this man survived cancer. And he told me, I said, because they, they say the government of Nigeria is assisting people with cancer. So it's time for me to go for my first scan and I don't have means, I'm out of job. And this young man told me, hey, Mr. Chai, they're not going to give you money, but they can they can assist you. I say, yes, I'm not asking of money. If you can sponsor my trip to SC and pay everything, that's that's what I want. I don't want you to give me this cash. It's okay, I should go and put a light up, up and ask for it. I did. As I speak to you today, the locket, it was seized. Nothing, nothing. Nobody has communicated to me. No message from there. Nothing, nothing now. So I, 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 I sometimes I, I wonder, I wonder, with all due respect, but I, I wonder how our medical system works. It's not really working. The 2021 that I went to, where I got money, I went for PET scan again, because even if you think you're free, but you have to be careful. So you can be checking if you have the power, the muscle, and the money to go. It was a human rights radio station where they called ordinary president. I had to cry to him. I told him my situation that I'm out of job and this is what I'm, I suffered and I need to check. This man felt so much for me and had to raise 1.6 million for me to go to South Africa and run my takeoff. I got with the, the return ticket, accommodation, feeding, everything. He gave me 1.6 and I went, my cancer was still, I'm still good to go. So it's not a sweet one at all. The last, I attended one seminar recently where the KB State governor's uh, wife attended and some governor's wife came with, it's all about cancer. And uh, I tell you, the the message was not good at all. Some some senators came, some House of Representatives came, and the Minister of Health was there. And they told the Minister of Health clearly that government will give money for cancer patients. The ministry will return back the money to the government for that. They did not see cancer this thing to treat. And we are all so shocked there. We that were survivors. We are so shocked there. And, you, and the, the honorable said, this is too bad. You have people dying of cancer and you cannot assist them. A government will give money. You will return back money that you did not see people. And we're there. I tell you, if you go to National Hospital, you will cry. So people cannot afford treatment. And that's one thing that kills easily again. When you think, when you think, where do I get money? Where do I get means to survive, to treat myself? And you don't have any hope. That alone can kill you. That alone can kill you. 
So it's so bad here. Yeah, I don't need to tell you lie. That the, the the pink blue that I joined is doing his best. But I tell you, his strength alone, if he is doing all of this alone, he cannot alone do it. So we're asking the government, even uh, last time with, the, with this simultaneous uh, cancer, this thing, I spoke there and I said, the government should please come to our aid. People are dying every day of cancer, not because they cannot survive, but because the money is not there. And I, I go to hospitals to advocate to people. I tell them, if I can survive cancer, you can survive cancer. Look at me here today. I'm a survivor. You will survive by the grace of God. Do you understand? So we, we do this advocate when they see us, they will have this hope and they will believe that, oh, this man suffered cancer and he survives. Why won't I survive it too? So it's, it's really not, government is not doing enough. That's just the truth. Uh, Otai, you know, it just broke my heart. You know why? Because on around the month of February, I think it was February, and I had also, also another advocate on who was very angry about World Cancer Day and lack of support. And I, I am trying to reach out and i think we're all going to have to sing this song together that we also have a right to live i don't know why governments think that we are just a number i think that's what they are I'm, i think that's the only way i can say it because if we're human beings at least somebody will talk to us anytime we're doing an event they don't come nobody comes it's like they are just there so you know what give me two things just two name two things that you want government to do for us. You name two, I will name one. You name two things you want, I will name one thing I want. Because I know that whatever you name, it is going to be common. And I'm sure all cancer survivors will name the same things. Because I think we are all crying out together. It's together we're going to win this thing. And the people that make decisions need to remember we also have a right to live. Give me two things. Name two things. One is finance. Mm -hmm. Finance is very important. That will help. And the second one is we that are ambassadors, we need to continue to speak and encourage people to give them this hope and confidence that they will survive. So they should keep fear away and have hope. But the first one, like I said, money, finance. And advocates rule. Yes. Uh, okay. Now, what is my own? Now, mine is, my own, my own request is, they should remember when people are making decisions that cancer survivors, when I say survivors, people that have the disease, the people that have gone through chemo, radio, surgery, all the things we have to go through are sitting at the table when decisions are made. Because nobody should be making decisions for cancer patients without cancer patients telling you where it's paying you. You will put budget. You do budget. You didn't ask us what is the budget. How did you come up with budget? Budget is about equipment. It cannot be about equipment because, like you have rightly pointed out, how are we going to go forward? You are begging people for money, and you are not getting anywhere. Okay, so we're going to take those three points. Now, the next thing I'm going to ask you is, let's look at the good part of this thing now. Give me. A positive, what did you get out of this experience? I'll tell you mine, you tell me yours. I'm going to tell you mine. What, what I got out of this experience was the fact that I got to understand that um, life is not in human beings' hands. It's in the hands of God. And as a cancer survivor, I believe that cancer patients are privileged in the eyes of God because God takes care of us. 
if it's about man, we're right off. But if it's about God, we have a chance. You tell me yours. Yes, I think mine will be almost similar because I wanted to say, even with money and God is not there for you, <laughs> he won't even make it because a lot of persons with money self could not make it. So God first. But let there be money so that God will help us. Because like you say, God is our father. He, he hears our cry because cancer disease is not what, what you can even wish your enemy. You can't even wish your enemy to have cancer, to suffer cancer. It's so deadly. So God hears our cries very well as cancer patients. And he helps us. I want to say thank you, thank you, um, thank you, thank you, Chai. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, you may not realize it, but your story also helps people go through it, recognize that this money issues, this medical challenges, all of us have gone through it. Yeah. The key thing is that we must fight. We must not give up hope. We must not say we cannot do it. You yeah. must remain positive and believe that we have somewhere, somehow, something will happen for us. And we shouldn't hide under religion. Please, yeah. all those suffering with cancer patients, all cancer patients, do not hide under religion, do not hide under fake um, um, promises. Remember, together we fight this journey, together we're going to win it. But we can only win it if we are honest with ourselves and those around us. So, Any message for your family? Or for, yes, for your family, actually. Yes. As I, as I uh, off now, I want you to give a message to your family. Yes, I, I sincerely want to thank my family because they were all with me when I was going through this terrible disease. Their support, their prayers, their concern, always with me around me, giving me hope that, hey, man, you will not die. And I said, yes, I will not die. So their encouragement was handsome. The, the, the little they have, you know, they have to go their ways and bring their own support to those that donated blood, donated blood. And I sincerely want to thank them because they were great people to me. My wife, every person that, you know, stood by me during this time. And especially to God Almighty, you know, that made my family to stood by me, gave them understanding. If not, some wives will run away when they see this kind of terrible sickness. But she didn't run. She was with me and she said, you will not die. And I said, yes, I will die. And look at me here today. Even there's no money, but I thank God I am alive. So thank you to all of my family members. All of you guys, God will continue to bless you. More love to everybody. Thank you. And I want to take this note to say thank you very, very much to all the family members across the world who support us cancer patients and survivors. We really do appreciate you. We really do love you. Sometimes we maybe be whinging and complaining, but just bear with us. We do see all the things you are doing. And on this note, I want to thank uh, Plus TV again, the management. I really, really, I tell you, we survivors, we appreciate this platform. We appreciate the fact that you sponsor us in creating cancer awareness that helps to reduce the death rates because currently the death rates in the world is over half, over 800,000 people, 900,000 people died of cancer in January alone. And that's uh, across the world. So please, together we fight, together we win. We thank you all. We ask you to share the videos. Follow us on our, on our social media platforms, on our Facebook, it's Comwood Cancer Foundation. That's the same on our Instagram page. You can find this video on our YouTube. Um, once it's been uploaded, and you will find it also on Plus TV's channel. So I want to say thank you all for joining us. Um, hashtag us, click, subscribe, share, and follow us on the notification buttons. We look forward to seeing you again in the next few weeks, actually. And we thank you all for supporting our campaign. Have a fantastic weekend. Have a fantastic week ahead of you. And God bless you all. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you all.